Hello, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. My name is Kevin Dixie. I'm the owner and founder of No Other Choice Firearms Training. We do firearms training all across the country for civilians, military, law enforcement, anybody in between that we can help out that wants to protect their lives and learn more about this tool and how to use it for sport and self-defense and everything in between. I want to congratulate you on taking the step to become a responsible individual with a firearm. And I'm pretty sure you're in the hands of a competent instructor that's gonna give you all the tools that you need to begin your journey and really getting out there and learning what it's like to protect yourself and protect your loved ones and become involved in all the different aspects of liberty that you would like. So once again, congratulations, and I'm happy to be a part of this journey with you. Alrighty, so let's get into the conversation. The reason why I'm on this video monitor in front of you today, you are with an instructor. That instructor is going to talk to you about these gadgets and gadgets, and they're going to teach you, you know, how to hold it, what it does. They're going to go over the nomenclature. You're going to talk about some laws, I'm sure. You're going to have a well-rounded discussion around this thing, which is awesome, which is great. I can tell you, we all come from different backgrounds. One of the things that I love about what I like to call the freedom community, people that are into the lifestyle of self-preservation and the sport and everything that comes along with this, decision that you're making today is that we all have a, a myriad of experiences. We all come from different places, have done different things. Uh, some of us have been in law enforcement, been in the military. Some of us have none of that experience, just somebody that found something we love to do and we do it well. So we come from all kinds of places and that brings all kinds of experiences, all kinds of viewpoints. Well, the one thing that I've had the unfortunate pleasure of doing is for I've been in the firearms about 25 years, and I've been teaching firearms and instructing on one level or the other for about a quarter of a century now. For about 10 years of my life, one thing that I did was I put people in cages, and those people are just like you. And I know, you're probably like, what do you mean? You're not putting me in a cage. I'm a law-abiding citizen. I'm not here to do anything wrong. I'm here to learn the laws and be responsible. I agree. And I'm pretty sure your instructor agrees, because why would they have a homicidal maniac accident in front of them? Right? So we agree. But what I can tell you is that I am the guy that goes unseen. And what I mean by that is I'm the guy that has to look at good people when they make bad decisions. So yes, I, my career, I had to deal with bad people. Bad people do exist. I've dealt with murderers, rapists. These are the individuals that I've had to contain to keep them out of society because they are no good for our society. Unfortunately, the flip side of what I've had to do is take good people just like you. And I've had to put them in those same cages because they made rash decisions when it came to self-defense. One, thinking that self-defense is common sense, and it is not. Please don't regard it as common sense. But what I noticed over the years is that we have things that are happening inside of us that we don't always address. And those addressing those things can keep us out of trouble. So one of the things I'm going to talk to you about today that gets us into trouble is bias. So let's get into what bias is and how we can utilize it to be safe, while at the same time not putting ourselves or other innocent people in danger. All right, now that I have your attention, let's talk about what bias is. So by definition, bias is showing an unreasonable like or dislike for someone or something based on personal opinions. Opinions is gonna be very important. It doesn't mean you've had a direct experience. So let's talk about in your lifestyle how bias can really play a part of keeping you out of trouble. So, unfortunately, many years ago, there was a school shooting at Columbine. Now, made national news. Even back then, it was, it, was un, it was sad. Everyone was talking about it. Well, think about the individuals that committed that act. So when we start talking about bias, right? The individuals that committed that act were teenage white males who wore dark clothing to include dark trench-style coats. Back then, it was considered to be goth or gothic is what we would call that style of dress, right? Now, if you are learning everything that you know about goth or gothic lifestyle from the incident at Columbine, you can develop a bias. You can then say, okay, so white teenage males in dark clothing with dark trench coats, based off my opinion, because of what I have taken in, are a danger. You can easily say that whether you even live around people that embark in that type of lifestyle. So what happens when you start carrying a firearm, right? And you're walking around and you happen to see if this bias goes untamed, you happen to see 
a teenage white kid, dark clothing, to include a trench coat, acting what you deem to be suspicious. Maybe this person starts to engage you in conversation. Maybe they seem a little hostile, in your opinion. There's that word opinion again. They seem a little hostile. And maybe you remember that this person is a threat to you because of your bias and that you have a gun. Then how might you respond to them? What chain of events might start to happen to where you begin to engage with them in a way where you actually do perceive them as a threat, even if they've done nothing? What is your bias? And have you taken the time to check it, to address it? Now, can your bias protect you? Sure it can. Absolutely it can. Because maybe using the example we're using, maybe that person was a threat that day. Or maybe they were just going to be an extreme annoyance to you. So you decided to cross the street or you decided to go down a different aisle at the store or whatever. So sure, can it keep you safe? Absolutely. But can it also cause you harm? Sure. Because if you assist in a chain of events that leads to some type of deadly force, then you can be held liable. Now, we can play the whatism game all day. We can also get into, well, in my state, the law states this, so I could maneuver that way. That's fine. What I'm telling you from experience, and when I say experience, I mean watching grown adults with a lot to lose realize they're losing everything and go through some extremely hard mental processes, understanding that their freedom is at jeopardy. So my experience says that people that haven't controlled their bias in a healthy way find themselves escalating situations or not de-escalating them when the opportunity existed because of their bias. So let's talk more about some things that align with bias and how you can wrap this all up to make sure you stay out of trouble. Okay, so now let's discuss the cousin to bias, which is prejudice. What is prejudice? Well, I'm going to look right this way and read it to you. It's a preconceived opinion that is not based on reason or actual experience. Now, prejudice is often a word that is confused with racism, right? And although they have ties together, they are different. So if I tell you that you have a prejudice, you have to understand that we all have them. They can be both healthy and unhealthy, depending on the situation and depending on how much you allow your prejudice combined with your bias to guide your decision-making process. Okay, so what notions or preconceived notions do you have about uh, a certain type of people? Could it be green people with orange hair? Does your heart start thumping a little bit? Uh, do you have a preconceived notion of young black men in hoodies like I have on today? Do you have a notion about that? Now, you can say defensively, well, no, I don't have that one. Then my next question is, well, can you seek and find the one that you do have? Because we all have a prejudice. What is yours? And it matters when you're carrying a firearm or you're ever gonna be in a situation where you might use force against another because your prejudice combined with your bias could be misguiding your decision-making process. And that's what we want to really, really hone in on. And only you can truly do the work, but you have to think about it. So if you're gonna leave the house that morning, right? And you see this person that reminds you of this prejudice. It could be the white teenage male in a trench coat the young black kid in a hoodie. It could be the Italian woman with red hair and a loud voice. It could be uh, a guy walking down the street that wears bright purple shoes and black pants and you have a bad experience with people with bright purple shoes and black pants. Whatever it is, these individuals are still going to be functioning in society. And so when you interact with them, how are you responding to the offenses they may or may not cause you and what are you doing what is coming out of you that is then making them respond in a certain way remember you're the one with the gun you you are the one that is sitting in a class right now taking the ownership and responsibility of being a responsible citizen carrying a firearm that starts with you having these real conversations with yourself have you thought about that or are you busy justifying it because i can tell you i've seen a lot of people justify their bias and prejudice in an unhealthy manner that's led them in bad situations.
Okay, so I can only be with you about 15 minutes today, so I don't have time to really deep dive into bias and prejudice and everything that ties in with them. But there is one other thing that I absolutely want to hit on. And once again, I'm going to slightly look to the left here because I want to go ahead and read this to you verbatim. An unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or a threat. What do you think I'm giving you the definition of? Take a moment. It's fear. It's fear. So your prejudice and your bias in an unhealthy manner can cause you to fear. If you fear someone or something, you are more likely to have an emotional response that is unguided, uncontrolled, and later justified in your own mind does not mean that legally and lawfully it will be justified. So we have to make sure that we control the bias and the prejudice, thus already having management over the fear. And I hope that makes sense because if you have a bias, you couple it with a prejudice or those things individually, and you have a firearm and you believe that something is a danger to you and you have an emotional response, fear, to it, you are going to try to protect yourself. Or there's a likelihood that you're going to do whatever you need to do to protect yourself from what you fear. What you perceive, there's perception again, what you perceive to be dangerous. So did the white teenage kid in the goth outfit that we now call emo, did he reach into that trench coat too fast? What was he coming out of his pocket with? Because if you have a bias, right? And even say a prejudice against people dressed like him, and now he's reaching into his coat fast, and he's too close to you, and you perceive him as being dangerous, and you become fearful, oh my God, what might you do in that situation? Was he just trying to give you a pamphlet because he wanted to know if you had a teenage son at home or a teenage daughter that might be interested in coming to an emo event? If it is the young black kid with the hoodie on top of his head, similar to this, right? Wearing dark clothing, walking through the grocery store parking lot and you see him coming and he's like looking around you know, like he's not trying to make eye contact, but you got this bias and prejudice against this description of person because what you've seen on the news, what your friends talk about, or maybe even something you've experienced 10, 15 years ago in your life. And he gets closer and you start saying, hey, stay back, stay away. But he's steadily looking left and right and he's not making eye contact with you. And then all of a sudden fear takes over. You get that emotional response, you become fearful, and then you start making decisions based off survival because you are now in fear. When the whole time he didn't make eye contact with you is because, well, he's like any other kid nowadays. You know, they spend all their time on their cell phones. Uh, they're not used to looking people in the eye and having straightforward conversations. And he had earbuds in his ear. And his head going side to side was him just trying to watch his surroundings because he knew he had earbuds in. So he's just kind of watching where he's going and he didn't hear you because he's listening to his favorite podcast or music. Or maybe he was even approaching you because he noticed that you were struggling to get groceries in your vehicle and actually wanted to give you a hand putting your groceries in your car. But can you imagine if you're operating from a fearful place that is then being validated? Confirmation bias is also a dangerous type of bias because if you're getting the signs that confirms your bias and your prejudice, then you're likely to go ahead and justify your deadly response to this individual. That means you no harm. These are the conversations we have to have with each other. These are the things that you have to realize that can get you in more trouble because presentation of a firearm in many states, and I would argue most of them, if not all of them, uh, but I won't get into the law. That's not my, my portion of this presentation. Presentation of a firearm alone is considered deadly force. So already you've committed a serious crime, even if you present a gun and you never press the trigger. That could ruin your life.
while also causing harm or trauma to someone that didn't deserve that type of response from you because you were operating from a space of fear, but you got there because of uncontrolled bias and prejudice. Once again, can those things be used in a positive manner when we get into discussions about situational awareness to keep us safe? Absolutely. But are they always the answer? Absolutely not. And so you have to have a real talk with yourself about balancing those things out, understanding that you have them, owning that, and making sure that you are acting accordingly when you are out in public, because we all have the responsibility of keeping our communities, our neighbors, and our fellow human beings safe. That includes from the firearms that we have decided to carry as well, and our decisions. And we don't wanna see you losing your family. We don't wanna see you losing everything that you worked hard for. We don't. You are doing the right thing by sitting in this class. And I wanna do the right thing by arming you with information that's beyond the gun goes into the human being that keeps the human being from making rash decisions that you can pay for for years to come. Okay, I hope that all made sense. I'm gonna leave you with three quotes today that I hope you carry with you. I hope you take note of this, jot this down, and carry it with you. So the first is from William James. A great many people think they are thinking when they are merely rearranging their prejudices. Let that sink in. Mark Twain said, where prejudice exists, it always discolors our thoughts. It's another good one. I want you to take that in. And then the last one I'll leave you with is from Albert Einstein. It's easier to dismantle an atom than a prejudice. Once again, it's easier to dismantle an atom than a prejudice. I want you to take this serious, just like you've made the serious decision to get into this great lifestyle. Understand that your prejudice and your biases can get you in trouble if they remain unchecked and if you don't have a real honest conversation with yourself to make sure you are not allowing those things to misguide you. The preconceived notions that you have about people are just that, they're your perception doesn't mean it applies to that individual, does not mean it's their reality. Your biases are yours. No one else should have to take ownership and deal with the negative effects of you having a bias against them that is not, say, uh, fruitful for any kind of engagement that you might have with them. So I just want you to think about that. I wish you the best on your journey. I wish you the best and carrying a firearm and protecting everything that you love and getting into the sport or whatever you want to do. I just wish you the best in life in general. And I don't want to see you be one of the people that I've had to put in the cage because they allow themselves to think self-defense was common sense and they left these emotional guiding systems to put them in places that they didn't need to be because of unchecked prejudices, biases that lead to fear, that lead to mistakes. So my name is Kevin Dixie. I wish you all the best. I turn it back over to the instructor now. Take it away.